Is this the biggest mistake fractional executives make? Getting clients shouldn't be this hard. Welcome to Fractionals Unplugged, an insider's perspective vodcast and podcast from Maven. We work with fractional executives to recreate their corporate income without the insane hours, building the business they want on their own terms. Jay Kingley, the co-founder and CEO of Maven, shares best practices along with tips and tricks on how you can build a robust pipeline to become fully booked with clients, start getting paid what you're worth, and eliminate your brute force marketing. Enjoy today's episode. Job one for any fractional executive is getting the right clients who will pay full value for your services on a predictable and robust basis. It doesn't matter how good you are at delivering your service if you have no one to deliver it to. Now, Jerry is a fractional CFO who was lamenting to me about why it was harder than he expected to bring in new clients on a predictable basis. As a new Maven client, he was just getting started on his journey of building his business. He has heard me repeat on multiple occasions, you've got to stop talking about yourself and start telling the stories of the clients you want to work with. It seems like such a simple thing to do, but Jerry was struggling to put it into practice. I guess he was looking for reassurance that he wasn't the only one struggling when he asked me if this was the biggest mistake fractional executives make when trying to bring on more clients. My answer, absolutely. Now here's how to do a quick check on whether you're talking about you or your audience. Count the number of first person pronouns you're using in your writing. First person pronouns include I, me, we, us, mine, ours, myself, and ourselves. Count the number of second person pronouns. Second person pronouns, Include you, yours, yourself, and yourselves. Then count the number of third-person pronouns. Third-person pronouns include she, her, hers, herself, he, him, his, himself, it, its, itself, they, them, theirs, themselves, and themselves. Your about them score, 100 is the maximum, is the count of the second-person pronouns you use divided by the sum of the count of the first person pronouns plus the second person pronouns plus one half of the third person pronouns, and you take that, multiply it by 100. Your about you score, 100 maximum, is the count of the first person pronouns you use divided by the sum of the first person pronouns plus second person pronouns plus one half of the third person pronouns, again, all multiplied by 100. This indicates if your messaging is focused on you. Let's say you've written a LinkedIn article as part of your marketing campaign. You've used eight first-person pronouns, three second-person pronouns, two third-person pronouns. Then your about them score is 25, and that's poor. Your about you score is 67. That's too high. I suggest you aim for an about them score of 75 or higher and an about you score of under 20. Here are three steps you can take to change the conversation from you to the person you wanna target. Step one, rewrite your content to be about them, not about you using the scoring system I just described. Now that you have the right focus, let's go deeper into what you should be communicating to your target audience. Step two, Communicate how your intellectual property, or IP, comprising of your insight and wisdom, can move the needle on issues more important to your ideal clients in your target market. In my last video, What Business Are You In?, you were challenged to rise above trading your time for money to offering your brain for value. Think about your intellectual property ladder. At the bottom, you have experience which has no IP and isn't worth much. Next up comes expertise. This has some IP, but it is widely available among others who do what you do. Then we have insight, which is your ability to diagnose and then solve the issues that plague your clients. You express a lot of IP and insight, and it is uncommon. And at the very top, 
you have wisdom or the ability to think out of the box to see solutions that others can't. This is rare and extremely valuable. What you choose to focus on in your messaging relates directly to the IP you are communicating, but it goes deeper than just that. When you talk about your experience and expertise, you're talking about yourself. When you are sharing your insights and wisdom, then you are talking about your ideal clients in your target market. Your experience is all about what you've done and accomplished. The spotlight is on you. Even when you are talking about your expertise and how you can solve a client's problems, you are talking about what you can do, not what your clients need. When you say, here's how I can help you, you are focused on you. The person you're talking to hears this. I have a problem. I need more paying clients. You can solve my problem by becoming one of my paying clients. The harsh truth is that there are only two people in this world who care about you, you and your mother. Your father knows better to think the world revolves around you. Your spouse or significant other only pretends to care about you as they have their own day-to-day issues to worry about. And for those blessed to have children, you know that they don't even pretend to care about you. Yes, mommies are wired differently and their care is 100% genuine, but mommy isn't going to build your business for you. When you're marketing your business, you're doing it in an environment that is noisy and getting noisier every day. It is harder and harder to break through the noise to get your intended audience to pay attention to what you have to say. The good news is that most of this noise comes from people talking about themselves in terms of what they can do for their clients, what they bring to the table, and how they can help. When you're on the receiving end of this type of messaging, you just tune it out. It never penetrates your conscious thought and it doesn't consume any of your precious time. If you're like me, you pay attention to perhaps 1% of all inbound messages from people you don't know well or from sources you haven't subscribed to. One out of 100. What is it about this small fraction of inbound communication that makes you stop and pay attention? The 1% are messages about you, not the sender. This is what you need to do to join that 1%. You'll empathize with the pain points I'm trying to get rid of and the outcomes I desire. You'll get me and it will feel like you're living in my head. You don't need to have a discovery conversation with me because you already know my issues and challenges. You'll give me insight into the root causes of the issues I'm trying to resolve, provide a broader context that changes how I'm thinking about them, and show me a path forward to resolving them. If you're really good, you'll sprinkle your insight with pearls of wisdom. You'll offer me the gift of your time to explore your insights and wisdom and a follow-up conversation without trying to directly sell me on using your services. If and when I need your help, I'll ask. Step three, you'll behave as if we are building a relationship of equal standing. Only talk to the people you are targeting and can help. Direct all others to resources that are better suited to help them. Don't engage with jerks and those that don't respect you. Don't be a jerk to those who give you the most precious gift they have, their time to engage with you. Ask yourself the question, knowing what I know, what would I do if I were in my prospect's position and situation? And then behave accordingly. Do the right thing for the prospects you are engaging and your business will take care of itself. Your reputation is already in the room before you enter and remains long after you've left. As Warren Buffett said, it takes 20 years to build a reputation, and five minutes to ruin it. If you think about that, you'll do things differently. You control your buying process that leads the right people to you. Your prospect 
controls their decision. You demand respect for your buying process and you give respect to the decision that your prospect makes. Embrace the perspective that every prospect you engage with will make the decision that is in their best interest at the time they make it. The number one thing you must do if you want to boost the results from your marketing and sales efforts is to stop talking about you and make the conversation about the person you're engaging. Let's have a conversation focused on how you can build your fractional business by changing how you engage with prospects who need your insight and wisdom. As a fractional executive, you work with us to help you recreate your corporate income without working the insane hours. Our fractional flywheel service focuses on how to price, package, and position your years of experience and expertise, create and refine your go-to-market strategy so it's effective and efficient, and then nail your execution. Working with us, you will build a robust pipeline to become fully booked start getting paid what you're worth, and eliminate your brute force marketing. Maven's unique fractional catalyst service for those serving startups and early stage companies gets you acting like a venture capitalist in managing your business and as an entrepreneur when working with your clients. Achieve financial security and reward with clients who want you to take charge, ask for forgiveness, not permission, in an environment without all the politics and bureaucracy you find in corporate. Email j.kingley at referabilitymaven.com to learn more.